Welcome back to Tech Tuesday. Um, so this one is about um, cleaning out your brush in a way. Um, it also is about me not taking my own advice. <laughs> so here's what happened. There's actually two of these brushes. The two brushes I use the most is, is this uh, uh, Iwata Custom Micron C and then it's made is the B which is a sl slightly smaller nozzle. They're both really high detail brushes. They do a great job for me. But both of these brushes started acting up on me. They were basically performing like there was paint stuck in the nozzle. Um, so I've done, you know, I did everything I normally do. I take the nozzle off and just kind of clean it out as best I can and um, it just kept happening like it happened way too fast and uh, I was having a hard time You know kind of trying to figure out like what what was really going on with it until I took this guy apart for the last time and what I noticed in it was a small hair a white hair and it was stuck in the nozzle so It doesn't matter what gets stuck in the nozzle anything is going to um, affect the performance of that airbrush uh, dried paint, a chunk of paint, um, a little stray hair will also do it. What I noticed was there was also a stray hair in this brush here. So the culprit was my mixing brush and cleaning brush. Now I know this is not a good thing, but I did not take my own advice and I was using these just crap garbage craft brushes from the hobby store. And this is what I was using to clean out my brush. And if you notice, it has lovely white hair. So these brushes are great for doing crafts and for putting paint or material down um, inexpensively and then even just discarding this brush when you're done. But they're inexpensive for a reason and that is because the bristles don't last very long and they're not very well attached inside the ferrule and surprise, surprise, the hairs start falling out. Um, so they were falling out of my brushes. I was using them to clean the brushes. And again, they held up really well in the beginning when they were new. I don't think I have one of these new right around here. So they were holding up pretty well new. No, I don't. Um, which is why I thought, you know, hey, these might work out pretty well. Um, there was a, a inexpensive brush that I did find that worked well. So I think that's why I had some hope for this one. What I should have been using is what I've been using all along. And that's really what this video is about. So there are better brushes to clean out and mix paint in your brushes. Um, my number one, and again, this was on the other bench, which is why I wasn't using it. What I normally do is I'll go to just a regular art store or online and I'll buy a really high quality round oil painter's brush. And I've had this brush, as you can see, I've had this brush forever. So a good, any good quality brush, that ferrule and the hairs are going to be really locked in. I like the oil painter's brushes because they're usually hog's hair. They're usually natural, but they're stiff. So they're great for cleaning out, you know, airbrushes and things like that. And the big thing is, is they don't shed. So they're, they're made very, very well. They're made for the abuse. So a brush like this is great for cleaning out your airbrush. And like I said, they last very long. What I even do on the long handles is I just cut them off and then basically sharpen them almost like a pencil not super sharp and then with that wooden end that exposed wooden end that's great for getting in little cracks and crevices on the brush to scrape away paint without damaging your brush so that's kind of what I do with that the other option too <clears throat> I don't like this one as much these are great for cleaning out your airbrush uh, you can get these in a kit you can buy them separately the uh, this one is old and frozen but this collar will unscrew and you can replace the uh, the, the tip. These bristles are excellent and they're really, really locked in there. The one thing I don't like about these brushes for cleaning airbrushes, the collar on this is metal and I try to avoid metal on metal as much as I can. So if you're careful with this and just use the bristles, you're fine. But if you get into like really digging in and this collar kind of comes in contact with sitting inside of your paint cup, um, you can do some damage to the cup. Uh, so that's the only kind of caveat with with this type of brush, but these are excellent. These would not shed in your airbrush either. Um, I've never used Q-tips only because uh, for that same reason, really, I don't want, you know, those Q-tip hairs to come off of the end of that and end up in the brush. So I know Q-tips are, you know, are popular. Um, so that is kind of what the deal is. So again, that's me not taking my own advice right there. <laughs> I had this, I had my, my trusty faithful clean out brush and it was on the other bench, but I'm working at the Vision Air station a lot lately. So I've just been grabbing whatever I could and that is not a good idea.
So there you go. So there is your learn from my mistakes video. And uh, hopefully, you know, you'll grab a good quality brush and you'll be off and running. It will not let you down. So there you go. All right. So for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, if you enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing and telling all your friends and all that fun stuff. If you have an idea for a Tech Tuesday, if something's bugging you, maybe I have the solution or we can come up with it together. So just send me a message and um, we will get it on the Tech Tuesday. All right. So I'll catch you guys for the next one.